Hi there. Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Uh, thanks for joining me today. My name is Vijay Krishnan. I'm from AWS. I'm one of the uh, senior partner solutions architect. Uh, that means I uh, work with a handful of partners, uh, manage partners. I work with like more than 10 plus partners in AWS, all working on blockchain. Uh, I've done um, you know two dozen implementations on the blockchain network, most, mostly on the enterprise. I've dealt at least like 100 plus use cases in the blockchain, mostly on the enterprise again. Uh, like most of you, I started my blockchain journey as a miner, so excited to be here and then uh, share some of the experience as well. But today I am here to talk something more exciting and also make an announcement that uh, you know it will just be too big for all you guys, including me. I'm looking forward to that. So, But before that, I'd like to talk about uh, Chainlink partnership and what we are doing with Chainlink from AWS. So AWS has something called uh, AWS Partner Network or APN, if you're familiar with. So here uh, we have uh, a handful of managed partners, like I mentioned, and Chainlink is one of the managed partner and also the newest partner in the ecosystem. And we've been working with Chainlink for like less than three months, probably like 70 days, I would say. Um, and uh, right from day one, uh, you know, it's been an agile team. Uh, you and I had uh, uh, spoken to uh, Roger from Japan, David from San Francisco, where I'm sitting in the middle. Uh, it's been like uh, great working with the team. And we want to build something together right from day one. Uh, you know, that's been our goal. And we want to do it like in a very easy way, faster way and a secure way for the customers, as well as for the uh, chain link customers that on the other side. And we want to follow all the well-architected framework reviews and the recommendations that, uh, you know, we publish as best practices from the AWS side. And we definitely want to change something from a customer experience perspective. So here I am sitting in front of you announcing the launch of AWS Quick Start for Chainlink nodes on AWS. So it will be officially released in two weeks or you know, in the beginning of September, but let's go and see like what we have developed for you guys. So what is Quick Start? Let's understand what is Quick Start first. So quick start are nothing but automated reference deployments built by AWS. So when I say uh, AWS, we do have dedicated teams for uh, developing these quick starts. So quick starts also are hosted in public repositories. Uh, if you do not know what is AWS quick start repository, then you can just go and uh, search for the GitHub for the AWS quick start repo. So you will find anywhere between like 250 repositories uh, uh, you know, quick start repositories there. And uh, Chainlink node will be one of the repositories there. And it's also gold standard. When I say gold standard, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, you know, just launch the quick start and you'll be good to go into production. So well-architected framework review, this is one of the, uh, you know, uh, main focus areas in anything that we built and publish. So well-architected review has five pillars. So the quick start that we built also follow all of these five pillars. It also comes up with a step-by-step -step instruction. You know, that means you don't have to know anything for you to get start with the AWS Quick Start. Even if you don't have any knowledge, the step-by-step -step guides will actually walk you through, help you launch the uh, stack that you are uh, planning to deploy in the AWS. And usually it's a one-click. We call it one-click and customers call it one-click. And anytime any to anybody refers as one-click is always fun, right? You don't have to do anything. Just click and then your stack is up and running in front of you. That's like, uh, you know, pretty exciting for anyone from the developer uh, side of things, as well as from the operations side. So it's completely open source. You know, we're not hiding anything on the back. So it's completely open and you can go into the kit app to look into the templates as well as all the code that we have put in behind. So let's talk about the quick start that we developed for the Chainlink nodes. So quick starts is again, nothing but a combination of cloud formation and a guide that will help you get up and running. So here for Chainlink node, so we have put together a configurable parameter, roughly 40 parameters that you can play around uh, and according to your needs. So this includes, you know, uh, a combination of you have, you have VPC already up and running, you can deploy the uh, Chainlink nodes to that. Or if you want to quickly spin up a new VPC and then deploy the Chainlink nodes to that, you can do that. Uh, you can provision your um, 
uh, Aurora database uh, for Postgres on the backend. You can actually configure your chain link nodes on the fly by providing parameters. So these 40 configuration parameters I'm talking about is like, you know, a lot of things that you go and do manually. Now you have a form to fill in and then get it up and running. So when you launch the CloudFormation template, you know, it actually creates a nested stack of, nested stack of CloudFormation uh, templates. And workloads that it creates, uh, you know, usually grouped into six CloudFormation stacks on the back. You, you'll be able to see what's going on in this CloudFormation stacks and how it is pulling up all the uh, sub-modules that we usually use for creating these VPCs, Bastion hosts, uh, private subnets and all that. And roughly, uh, it creates like 30 resources. So here resources means it is either an AWS service, a configuration that, that you need to launch the Chainlink node or some resources that is like intermediary when it comes in helping doing a configuration. So it is everything together in roughly 30 resources. So we do not want to just stop there and we want to do something that be helpful for the administrators and operators once you launch the uh, stack. So once you launch the stack, you need to actually administer and monitor the stack. So we have introduced a couple of services, especially one service in particular into the uh, quick start. So which will actually monitor the chain link node in the stack using an AML on the background for any operational or administration anomalies that you can take care. So I'll talk about the service a little bit a little later, but this is going to help, especially the DevOps person, or you know, if there is a team, usually we refer to a pizza size team or a half a pizza team, you know, where uh, you run a lot of uh, these nodes and you have like minimal resources to manage them. So this is going to come like very, very handy for you. So what are we talking about here? You know, when we put the whole thing together, your deployment time to launch a chain link node is going to go down from days to hours to minutes. So how much time are we really talking about here? So we are running all the uh, tests internally and anywhere between like 35 to 40 minutes or you know, plus or minus a few. Uh, again, it's going to depend on a lot of other factors, you know, which region you're running, what kind of other uh, workloads you're running, depending on your accounts and other configurations, depending on the time of the day that you're running. So everything matters. So anywhere between like 30 to 40 minutes is when your stack will be ready and your chaining node will be up and running. So you don't have to worry about uh, a lot of these configurations because you're just going to fill in a bunch of parameters in the form. And then you can just uh, you know hit the start button, go for a coffee or lunch, come back, your chain link node will be ready to operate. So let's quickly look at the architecture. So the architecture that you're looking at here is a pretty standard architecture. We wanna keep it again, uh, simple and easy for people to understand what we are building. So it's a single VPC architecture, you know, with two availability zones. The availability zone is introduced here so that, you know, any kind of uh, high availability or uh, any, any kind of uh, failure or uh, you wanna uh, load balance your uh, workload, you know, that it becomes like very easy. So within this availability zones, there are like four uh, subnets, two public subnets and two private subnets. The public sub subnets usually has the, uh, you know, the uh, usual suspects here, the NAT gateways and the Bastion host, the NAT gateway to communicate to the internet and actually uh, the Bastion host for you to log into the uh, uh, chain link node, easy to instance and then see, you know, what's going on there, just in case if you need to apply a security patch or you want to do something quickly, check some things, uh, you know, check some logs or, you know, push in some more code, then you can do that using the Bastion hook. So again, the Bastion nodes are um, load balanced uh, using auto scaling group. So you don't have to worry about they going down, you know, you'll automatically get another Bastion host because it is under the auto scaling group. So moving on to the private subnet. So this is actually where your uh, you know, chain link node is going to sit. As you can see, it is again, auto scaling group is enabled. Uh, you know, we are giving you pretty much every other EC2 instance possible out there for you to pick from. So we do not want the customers to be restricted only with certain set of EC2 instances. For example, you are a developer and you just want to launch a chain link node and play around with it. Even you can uh, you know, use the uh, free tier T2, T2, T2 micro for that and then start playing around. But if you are a large customer, 
you start running, you know, hundreds of nodes and all your nodes have like significant workloads, then you can all the way go into like something like six, 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 six extra large or CFX four extra large. So really, you know, you know, you were giving you the power that you need. So on the back end, uh, you know, we picked up uh, Amazon Order Postgres uh, because of uh, you know it's a self-managed service. You don't have to do again anything from an operation side. You know, it's going to avoid a lot of overhead. You don't need somebody sitting there and monitoring your databases. It's going to do, do pretty much everything what NDBA will do for you. Uh, it's uh, three times faster than the regular RDS databases that we have as another option. And it also comes up with uh, automatic failovers and read replicas and all that. So that's the reason we went for uh, Amazon uh, Aurora Postgres. So on the right-hand side, you see uh, you know, the other services in play. It's a key management uh, service, you know, which will enable your uh, uh, certificates and uh, secrets to be encrypted and decrypted by the services. Your certificate manager will actually store your uh, SSL, which is need to operate on the Chainlink node. Your secret manager will actually handle all the credentials that you're typing in from the uh, cloud formation. And even if you have to enable policy rotations, uh, password rotation, things like that, you know, the secret manager will actually take care of that. So all the 40 parameters configurable that I mentioned before is handled by the system manager parameter. So here the system manager parameter will actually uh, take in all the parameters that you type, like, type on the form and then give it to the system manager parameter store. And the system manager parameter store is where the stat picks up all the parameters for you. So we enable CloudWatch. So CloudWatch is uh, there for logging. So you can actually uh, uh, go and look at your logs as usual, you know, as you do in the other uh, AWS applications. So again, on the top, uh, that's the service I want to talk about a little bit, you know, which is going to help you, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the operations and the administration of the node once the node is uh, launched. So let's quickly, before going into the DevOps Guru, let's quickly look at the uh, uh, forms that you, you may uh, start filling up. So once you launch the quick start, you know, uh, CloudFormation stack, then these forms will come up. So this is the 40 parameters that I was talking about. Again, here, if you see, you can give a stack name. On the uh, parameter side, you know, you're know, you seeing uh, network configuration that includes you know, your uh, uh, current VPC or you want to create a new one. You can provide your set of ranges for your public and private subnets. Again, up to you how you want to do it. On the right-hand side top, the chain link node configurations is where the core chain link node configuration resides. You can pick up from any one of the uh, networks, including the mainnet or Coven, uh, Rinkyb, Robston, any one of the network that you are, uh, uh, you know, configuring your Chainlink node against, so that you know your smart contracts can interact with it. And you provide your uh, email for the GUI and the password for the GUI. And here you specify your uh, WebSocket connection to your um, uh, network that you picked on the top. So that's pretty much you know you need to do from a chain link node perspective. You know it's literally like four different configurations that you put in, and then uh, you know we take care of everything uh, for you. You know we are uh, uh, doing all the heavy lifting for you. you. You don't have to actually go and spin up all these services on your own. So on the bottom you'll see the Postgres configurations. Again, we are leaving it up to you uh, depending on your needs, how well or how deep you want to go into the instance configuration. We are just really leaving it up to your choice. The next thing is, um, you know, uh, here the uh, DevOps Guru is an optional parameter. When I say optional parameter, by default it is uh, false. But I strongly recommend, you know, start using the DevOps Guru uh, by enabling it, and you will see, you know, how easy it is for you to monitor and administer your uh, stack automatically. You're not doing anything. The uh, underlying AML programs, which does a lot of model learning from the other programs is going to help you uh, launch administer and even uh, give you like instructions on how to fix an issue if there is an issue com coming into play. So on the right hand side, uh, you know, this is the finished uh, stack, uh, you know, a sample finished stack. As you can see, it, it does have like uh, uh, six different stacks here when you launch the uh, AWS Quick Start. And what you're seeing here is, um, you know, the corresponding services and the underlying configurations that went through, you know, all this is like done by you know, a single click of a button. And what you need to do is just fill in the uh, form on the 
left hand side that I'm showing you. So that means once you're done with this, that means your chain link node is up and running. That means your smart contracts can start interacting with the uh, a chain link node, uh, you know, pretty easy. You don't have to do anything uh, here rather than you know just launching the uh, template and then uh, putting in a bunch of configurations and you're there. And uh, more than that, right? This is production ready. I mean, you know, this is like no child's play. This is like a production ready. The moment you see the stack up and running, that means it is good for production. You know, we have taken all the heavy lifting for you in terms of you know high availability, performance, cost optimization, security, we have considered everything that's written on the well architecture review guide, and we have implemented that for you. So moving on quickly, so what is DevOps Guru? So DevOps Guru is an AML function, uh, you know, uh, specifically designed for monitoring a cloud formation stack. You don't have to do anything. It's again a managed service. You know, it continuously monitors, manage, uh, monitors the stack and creates metrics for you. And if it finds an anomaly, it just triggers an alert. It does not triggers an alert. That may be an understatement. It also tells you, you know, where the logs files are located and then even uh, sends you a snippet of the exception if there is a stack trace. And also it provides you a guidance on how to fix an issue. I'll share a screenshot on what kind of recommendations it gives you. And it is scalable, you know, just in case if you uh, decide to scale your nodes to hundreds of nodes, you know, it does scale automatically. Again, again it can scale down back as well. So on the other side, uh, you know, more from an operations and management perspective, you know, when there is an, uh, a defect or when there is an outage going on from your stack, there's too much noise that's going on, you know, the MTTR becomes a very uh, difficult uh, thing. But if you are an incident uh, responder or a first responder in this space, and you will have all the information that you need to start working on the resolution straight away, including the recommendations from the tool. So how cool is that? That's going to save you a lot of midnight oil, I would say. So um, this is something that uh, I pulled in from uh, a sample. So this is uh, the insight that you'll get uh, here. You know, it's even saying, you know, what are the metrics that is um, uh, capturing what are the anomalies it's directing and the accommodations that it is giving you to look in and then go and fix the issue. So this is going to be a you know, very important tool for you from a Chainlink node perspective to mo monitor and administer the node. Okay, next steps. So people who are looking, uh, you know, this presentation, if you are a developer, if you are a customer, or if you are a node operator or a data provider, and you want to pilot or get started with us, you know, these are the three names that you got to remember, and this will be part of the presentation for you. Uh, you know, either you can contact me or William from Chainlink or Robert from uh, Chainlink uh, if you want to pilot or get started with the quick starts. Like I mentioned, we are testing this now. It will be out, you know, pretty soon. And, uh, you know, we are excited to uh, launch this, uh, you know, the, within the first three months of our partnership. And uh, with that, I will... Uh, say a big thank you for Chainlink and the Smart Contract Summit for giving me an opportunity. And I have provided my contacts here as well, you know, if you had to reach out to me. And I hope you guys are having a good time with the Smart Con, Smart, Smart Con Summit. I'm having an excellent time here. Again, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn. Vijay, it's amazing to meet you and great to see this solution. Uh, as well. Um, uh, what a fantastic day. The community is very excited as well. I can see the chat going crazy. Uh, people want to know where they can uh, learn a little bit more about that documentation. So it sounds like um, you, you gave some great email addresses at the end, but then also chat, if you want to, if you've got an application, you want to start thinking about how you want to use this, you can go talk to our chain with experts right now in the expo as well. Get on the list and, and figure that out. So appreciate Thank you again. <laughs>